Hey everyone, welcome to a little bit different of a DIY video for this green log storage shed thingy. Uh, so to introduce it, we've got this little fire pit here and we previously, we being my wife and I, uh, designed and built this little storage for, you know, our logs and whatnot for the fire. And really we had two different uh, needs. One was to store larger pieces of logs for longer periods of time to let them season. Uh, as well as the need for a little bit of a, call it table, workspace, uh, you know, somewhere to put s'mores, you know, drinks, beer, stuff like that while we were using the fire pit. Um, so those are really the only two parameters. We, we spent uh, a little bit of time figuring out where we wanted it. If I zoom back a little bit, we've got a little bit of a hill right here on the right side that protects us privacy wise from the road. This is providing a little bit of shelter and privacy or a little bit of a sense of security there. And right here, uh, you can see that white house in the background is our neighbors. So decided to put it right here. Once it's a little bit more full, it'll give us some nice little privacy. Uh, and then it steps down on the left there uh, for essentially allowing us kind of a little bit more of a view and access to, uh, you know, our view is really that way uh, through the valley. So I primarily wanted to show this just for one aspect. Um, so I was previously going to use the pre-built fence posts that you can buy at, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, when I was there, for whatever reason, they were $45. Um, you know, since wanting to make this video, I've actually realized just recently that they do make cheaper ones that you can get online. Uh, you know, something that's not Simpson strong tie. Um, but basically what I did is I bought two different Simpson strong tie brackets and put those on either side. One of them goes all the way into the ground. The one on the left there, it's an L bracket. The other one is just kind of a fence post based that really because of the, the leg out on both sides prevents it from going any deeper. You can see that a little bit clearer on that one over there. Uh, so I thought that this was a little bit of unique of a solution. Um, I, I'll, I'll write the actual price in the in the comments of the video, but I believe this was about four or five dollars, as well as this being about five or six dollars. So for me, it was about you know ten dollars or so per fence post, rather than the forty-five dollars. But once again, if you're doing this, uh, I've since learned that there are cheaper fence posts, pre-built ones that you should maybe want to consider instead of doing this custom way. So yeah, if that sounds like fun, um, stay tuned, enjoy the show. Okay, we've got everything about six feet off from each other, about three feet in the uh, depth direction. Uh, you know, it just took a break, minute to sit down here and see how it how it feels. Um, you know, so that's the neighbor's house, which is going to be blocked by this, which is one of the reasons to do it. Um, now, I was originally just going to do horizontals going all the way across, and I was actually going to leave these vertical pieces longer. I think that they'd be nice to potentially hang, um, you know, cooking equipment off of, or even, you know, string some low level lights so that we can turn them on and see the food at night. Um, but I'm kind of thinking it might be interesting to like do a, do one that diagonals down and then seal up the side so that I can have like, kind of like a, a sticks throw spot. Um, I currently have all the sticks there and it'd be nice to have a spot for the sticks. Um, not still set on that. I, I was originally going to do four feet, but I didn't have enough four by fours left over. Um, and that's actually why the middle ones are shorter is just because it's left over from other projects. So I'm thinking, you know, the negative of this is that it's not going to provide a lot of room by the time I put the two by sixes going across here, you know, that eats up another five and a half inches. We're already a good six inches off. So that's 
it's about a foot at the bottom and then we're gonna only go about three feet up and then so we're only gonna really have about a foot and a half of space to put the logs there um, you know it's part of the reason I think why people don't do this um, I could do you know I could do actually just diagonal going down like that angle down keep one side completely open for all the storage and then do a shorter side on the other side um, which if I do that I might want to actually switch these two and then I can angle it down so it's kind of angling down with you know kind of mimicking their roof line there um, you can tell that I do not know what I'm actually going to be doing so uh, yeah let's, let's see where this goes I think I might need to go get my I was trying to leave my chop saw in the, in the garage and just do all the cuts over there but I think I might go get it along with a bunch of pieces of leftover two by six and um, yeah, let's see kind of where it goes. I think it might be even easier to pull all these out and build it on the ground than stand it up together. So let's see where it goes. All right, <clears throat> figured out what I'm gonna do. Uh, had a bunch of eight foot long pieces and you know, originally I wanted to do four foot, but I don't have enough columns. Eight foot is a little bit too long of a span, um, but you know what? Screw it. Can always add shoring or bracing if I need to. Um, so I'm actually gonna, I think, do just basically both tall ones here, eight foot across. Um, probably just, you know, leave that open, just top. Um, then I'm gonna do over here on the lower end, just a four foot um, piece just you know we don't need that much room for the table probably anyway and we can always build off of it if we do uh that way it just creates less less waste so i just chopped a couple of eight foots and a half um had a couple of eight footers and then had two two by four eight footers and just literally chopped off the angles um figured it'd be a good opportunity just to do maybe a cross diagonal bracing we do a little x in maybe the middle or something um we'll see how stable it is i'll kind of adjust when I need to, I think. Um, so just gonna get back to that, see how it goes. Um, originally I was gonna just, you know, put them in the spots and then that way I could make sure everything was level and, you know, going like that. But, you know, this is gonna settle the way that I did the, the little column offsets. Um, I think it'll actually be okay if I just build it on the ground. It might be a little bit wonky here and there, but uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not too worried about it. It's pretty flat ground right there. Um, it's going to be act more like a raft foundation anyway with these pieces. So going to build it on the ground, see how it goes. Uh, you know, if anything, if it does pitch too much, I think that's a good thing for probably drainage on the pieces and all that. So we'll see, we'll see. All right, was a bit touch and go there for a second. So got it up um, as far back left side is way, way lower. So you can kind of see that in the tops, um, the back side's lower on both, but it's a little bit lower on that one. So I had to adjust some things. Uh, it was quite wobbly before adding in the cross bracing. Um, that's just a two by four, literally cut as big as you can with um, getting two of these pieces out of it but it is really, really solid now. Um, having the two right here was actually really nice. I was able to just stick a foot on there and just push it all down. Um, you can kind of see the idea behind the, uh, the standoff. So that one's the one that's the L bracket that's just going all the way down in. So it's got about three more inches in the earth there. And then that's holding it off. So what you're actually seeing right there is there is actually space right there. Um, the idea that it, you know, even though these are pressure treated, that they, uh, you know, just 
stay a little bit less moist. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm obviously just using not pressure treated because that's what I have right now. Um, pretty happy with this. I think, you know, in an ideal world, I'd have another piece, I think, on the backside right there in the middle, just shortening the, the span there. Um, but, you know, the span's not too long, and it's going to be for stuff like this, you know, things that just, instead of standing up here, they can get cut in half and laid across there. So I'll probably add one more, but I think I'd have to go buy one. I don't have that here, I don't believe. So I'm going to use the four footers. Um, I left off half of that there. Uh, you know, it's not the best uh, doing a face connection like that. It should be doing, you know, lag bolts, but, um, you know, worst comes to worst. I kind of, I have enough of these four by four little pieces that I could even do a couple just right in here, um, mid span, which I think I might do. Those, those can be, um, you know, things that if I, they get rotten or dead, I can pull those back out. Um, if I'm worried about it. So I'm going to get going with this other side and hopefully, hopefully it works. All right, so it's the next day. A lot less bugs to deal with. Um, so yeah, let's look and see what we've got. Um, you know, I'm not really planning this out as I go. Um, so I think the first thing is it looks unfinished, obviously, because it is, but uh, I think it's gonna look unfinished no matter what because of the cross bracing. Um, not a huge fan of cross bracing normally. Uh, I wanted to put it in this just to give it a little bit more stability and strength based on what I was doing at the bottom. Uh, but there's, you know, a couple of things I think I could fix, uh, that would make it a little bit less, um, you know, unfinished. Um, first I think is, uh, putting a little bit of, a, you know, some, some tops to these columns, which I'm going to do anyway, because don't want water sitting on the tops here. So want to get some copper, um, covers for the tops, which will help. Uh, I also think I can fix things like this. Um, you know, it wasn't. Originally was gonna put the piece of board across the front here, um, but this being kind of the, you know, the, the spot to, you know, put food and everything. I uh, wanted to look, you know, similar to Kitchen Island or Kitchen uh, Countertop, I wanted to have a little bit of an overhang. So I actually moved that inside there so that you can step up and this will actually overhang a little bit somewhere right here. Uh, I'm still not too set on what I'm doing here. Um, just because, you know, I'm not sure if this makes sense for, you know, that alone would work, but, you know, uh, beer or cups or something would fall through. Um, so I'd want to do something tighter like this. And you kind of get the question of if you're going to be doing something tighter like this, maybe even half a bar spacing or whatnot, I think it'll look nice, but the question kind of becomes why not just, uh, why not just do a solid roof um you know use one of the polycarbonates or something um same thing goes for here you know this is gonna look unfinished now i left it higher i think what i might actually just do is i might take these guys off put a two by four going like this pitching it up similar to what i did right there and just letting this be um you know yet another little covered storage area, which I don't really want to do because I don't like cutting that, <laughs> that plastic, but I think that would work. Um, get a nice, and I think another board in the back there, you know, making it symmetrical. Symmetrical is going to look a little bit, you know, I'm trying not to spend a lot of money on this, but I think it's what I need to do. Um, and then, like I said, I, I haven't really been measuring and I was going to put the front board there, so I left it over. So I might just remove this board line it up on the side and line it up right there just so that it kind of looks a little bit more together. Um, and then I think also facing the sides with some things, um, you know, it might help a little bit. That actually, to me, doesn't look 
terrible. Um, but you know, maybe even another two by fours going up would be nice. So that's gonna be a lot of money. Um, so maybe just facing it with something on the side or just integrating it. Not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, kind of in a mood to just go to Home Depot and I got some other stuff I need to pick up anyway. Just figure out what's going on there um, and see where we go from there. So we'll pick it back up a little bit later. All right, taking a little break here. Uh, so ended up removing that cross bracing right there. Uh, fixed out these this one in the back. You can see it's still a little long. Fixed the one in the front. I um, think I'm just gonna take a saw to cut off those little random end pieces. Um, still trying to decide what to do about the roof. Um, so started laying all this out. The whole entire goal was just to create a spot for, you know, trays and food and stuff. Um, lovely wife came out here and made me feel a little stupid for uh, this kind of problem where that works, but this is obviously not going to work. So decided instead to basically do about half of it uh, tighter. Um, just actually use the square as the, as the spacer, essentially. Um, you know, would honestly do the rest of it that is the tighter spacing, but don't have enough um, boards. I think I pretty much just have those two left, um, which I'll probably move those over. So uh, in theory, you know, this will be half for drinks or smaller items, and then the other half would be like plates and trays and stuff like that. Uh, ended up getting this little strapping pieces. Um, didn't want something this thick for the sides, but did want to provide just a little bit of cover. Um, you know, it looks like open lath. I'm not super happy with it. I um, think I might add another one in between. Uh, I think so. Uh, we'll see. But gonna pretty much keep going, see how it goes. I think it's starting to look a little bit less uh, under construction and a little bit more refined. Um, we'll, we'll see. You know, it'd be nice to put like end caps and stuff on the bottom. But once again, not the kind of goal of this. This isn't really meant to be something great so i'm i'm struggling internally you know as a as a designer not really at all liking how this is looking but i um, just wanting it to be you know functional for the end goal so i think i'm gonna um you know an example i, I is, is i was gonna just leave these going across um i think i might actually end up cutting them or doing something that just goes in between the post because they do have caps for the post. And I like the way that'll look. And so I don't really want to cover the posts, but obviously I have too much length here. So I got to figure out what to do about that. Um, I might just cut it into two, four foot sections each and lay them across if there's enough. Um, we'll see. So and get back to it. So I think I figured out what I'm gonna do. So I swapped one of the braces to be this way. My theory here is that it's gonna look a little bit more purposeful if they're both going the same way. It looks a little bit more finished. I actually, depending on strength, might take that one out to just clean it up a little bit more. And then instead what I'm gonna do, since I'm missing the cross bracing at the top, I'm gonna put a board going across, so that gives it a little bit, since it's at an angle. This is gonna give me my pitch on my roof. Um, gonna stay, you know, screw it in both sides there, let it overhang. Um, then I'm just gonna put boards going in between it. That way it creates a little bit of a structure so that the water can shed off of the back. Um, and then I'll probably actually end up removing these guys. This will be temporary. Um, and I think it should feel a little bit more cleaned up and purposeful. It still is a little bit janky with things not being quite square, um, you know, not caring too much about that, but 
I think that this is going to get us past the point of just kind of feeling like a dumb little thing that's under construction um, to a finished product. And I do think I'm going to fill in more here so that this feels a little bit more more finished like siding rather than um, being just kind of open lath. Uh, all right, my phone's getting a little bit hot and running on battery, so I'm not going to do time lapse for this, but we'll check back in once it's done. All right, so thought I'd take a quick video. Liking this a lot better. So we got the cross supports there. Looks a little bit more purposeful. Got it all there. Still need to trim off the sides at the ends there. Um, gotta go get my saw for that. Ended up deciding to, um, I had enough, so decided to seal out this whole entire space with tighter pieces. Moved the cross bracing into the, the spaces there. So that's a bigger spot. Um, decided to do a little bit of a, uh, just end detail there, which I think looks all right. Um, so I'm about to start painting this before I put on the um, the roof. This is going to be an issue with paint, obviously. Um, I don't really care. I'm just going to, you know, let it drip down the sides and hit it as best as I can. It's not really super critical to get it looking nice, but just want to get this all done before being able to paint it and put on some caps in the roof and then we're good. All right, so got it all painted up. It's still actually drying a little bit. You can see the, the wet spots on the bottom are, are still there and it's just doing a little bit of touch-ups on some spots. Um, don't be like me, don't be an idiot. Uh, paint everything beforehand if you're gonna be doing something like this. Um, I never really knew what I was gonna be doing and you know I, I should have just painted all the lumber before even cutting and then I would just cut painted the cut ends. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to get in spots, especially something like that, uh, that little desk you can kind of see in the little sides, but you know, for something that this is, I think it's fine. Um, I do think I'm going to eventually put columns in the middle here just to help support those. I don't think I'm going to put one across the middle or any more support. I don't, I don't think I need it, but I'll see. Um, if anything starts to happen with the fasteners, you know, you use lag bolts instead, but um, it's supposed to be just be for stuff to dry out on and, you know, twigs and little tiny trees and stuff. So I'm um, going to start probably putting on the, uh, the roof, letting it dry while also touching it up. Um, just kind of starting to slowly make my way through finishing this up. All right, looks like I didn't get it on video, uh, but I've been putting these copper caps on. Um, these are actually the cheapest caps you can buy at Home Depot, but um, you know, I, I, I like them the best. We used them over there on our garden just when I replaced that one section of the fence. Um, you, they, they dress it up quite a bit, actually. It's uh, kind of like a little piece of jewelry on it, um, and it makes it look a lot, a lot better. Uh, be surprised how much those little cornice caps and stuff like that on buildings can do. Um, I'm kind of overkill. I'm just using this 
black Dynaflex running a bead all the way around the inside. You know, you could just do beads in the corners or whatever, but I like the idea of just trying to seal it off. Um, and then you literally just push it down and you wiggle it a little and you can get it to sit on. Um, those have been on there for a couple of months through some extremely rough storms uh, and they're done just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the last one right here real quick. Completely overkill. You don't need to do this at all. Doesn't need to be nice looking either, but just gives it a nice little seal. And then you can just basically just gently wipe your hand. You can wipe anything clean off of it and you can and try to fix it a little bit if you wanted it to, you know, look more more one way or the other. There's a little bit of flex in it. All right, I think we're calling this done. Um, so yeah, it didn't really turn out exactly how I thought it would. Um, uh, you know, for what it is, it's not bad. It's not nearly as designed as um, you know something like this where I intentionally wanted these to kind of poke out and there to be the joint shown and stuff like that. Um, it's a little bit more rudimentary, call it primitive, whatever you want to call it. I, I'm a little nervous for how this is going to perform. The, the deck it probably doesn't really make sense at all. Um, you know, the original intent of these was to leave a bigger gap, but, you know, as my wife pointed out, that's not going to be good for drinks. So, closed them up but I'm a little nervous about um you know debris getting caught in it like leaves and stuff so we'll see how that performs um this little side piece just to try to dress it up a little bit from this side just to kind of hide what's going to be going on in there um could take it down lower um but you know kind of it's one of those why why bother um you can actually see how poorly I did with the roof um if you kind of critique it there. Um, that's because this is all not a uh, perfect square. Um, I measured the diagonals and everything, but you know, just through the natural process of building it and not really caring, it's not really squared up. Uh, if I think I've, if I was to do it over, I think I'd make this a little bit smaller. Instead of doing an eight foot, I'd do a six foot. Um, I think the proportions would be a little bit nicer instead of a one to two, you know, one, one and a half or a two to three kind of idea. Um, I do think I'd you know, maybe paint everything before putting it in, just because obviously it was, if you saw me painting, it was it was kind of a little bit of a nightmare painting it. Um, but I think it's gonna do great for what we want. You know, um, we really just wanna be able to put logs, you know, like this thing, instead of resting them up against the tree and um, not being able to really mow or even cut down here. Um, you know, I want to expose this root a, a little bit better for this tree because we love this tree so much and we want to treat it right. Um, that gives us just a little spot to kind of dry things. Um, the workspace, you know, it's four feet across. Um, you can actually see if you look closely um, some spots where, you know, the brush was really hard to actually get in there. I, you know, I don't really care. This whole thing's going to get that dirty and messed up anyway. It's over, over time. Um, one interesting thing is these are purchased from Home Depot and you can see these are actually all lined up perfectly on the front, but I think Home Depot might cut these themselves off of longer strips, um, maybe remnants. And that's actually just about two to two or three different bundles and all the different lengths. And, you know, by the time I figured out that they were all different lengths, I was a little too late to really properly um, disperse them throughout.
So yeah, I think if I was to redo something differently, the main thing I would do is um, make sure to line up that top with that top. I actually split it about halfway, um, but I, I, you know, I, I think one inch or two inches on is, you know, this is probably what, three inches instead of three and a half. Um, yeah, I'd make sure to line those up just because I was running into issues. I wanted to put these a little bit lower to gain more storage room, but um, it's actually not off of this guy, it's off of this guy. Um, which, you know, you can see that issue right here where this is just about half an inch or a quarter of an inch above this little plate here. Um, the other thing I'd make sure to do, which uh, I kind of messed up on, is they have a pattern of three bolts here. Um, make sure to do the far one when it's inside, because you can see I was doing one and two. Um, I accidentally did this one on the inside. They should be on the outside here and then the inside there. That way they get the most bite on the uh, four by four, which I got lucky and I did everywhere else. Um, that was just one that I noticed hadn't have that done. Um, definitely would measure a lot before doing this. If you're gonna plan this out, maybe draw yourself up a little diagram. Um, you know, the intent here was to not really measure anything and whatnot and, um, you know, adjusting midway through to kind of sort of line that up even though I didn't have it planned to be lined up so it doesn't line up um, it's kind of a little bit annoying you know but you see the middle on the other side and the back pieces of course in the middle um, you'll see here I wanted the tops to be exposed because I knew this was going to be kind of a crummy looking thing so I wanted just instead of two little end cap posts right there which would be a little bit weird I wanted to have six so I ended up pulling um, pulling the roof into the inside and what I did is I just normally I would flip this and this would be you know this wouldn't be like that because um, you want the joints to not never be like like this because water can get underneath there um, you know it, it's four feet of polycarbonate it's not going to matter I don't think here um, but this is kind of the normal joint of what you'd want you'd want over the top right here um, so that everything can drip off of this down into the valley and go but on the edges here, decided to basically flip that just so that we could get all the way up so that anything that was running down this, this cap hopefully will drop and get into this valley and just kind of go. Um, did that on both ends. Also didn't really measure out the, the roof or anything, which um, I had to basically squeeze it a lot on one side and not squeeze it on the other just because of the fact that the, you know, the rectangle at the bottom isn't really square it's a little bit of a rhombus um the other way to do the roof of course would be something more akin to like this where you go over the top of it um and here you can see um uh, just what we did is um we basically have this last valley on the last post there and then that way this all just cantilevers off giving this whole fascia board piece a little bit of extra protection um so yeah, pretty happy with it. Um, nothing, nothing to, you know, write home about, but um, it was a fun little project. And if you're gonna do it, I, you know, ask questions if you want dimensions or close-up photos or anything like that. Um, I don't think you'll need it. It's not, you know, the whole idea behind this isn't that it's not complicated, but um, best of luck if you're trying it out yourself.